is, it is wonderful to see in, these, in this day and age when the youth of our country are always put down, to see young people doing such fantastic things. And uh, it's a, a real privilege to be part of it. Christopher, aren't you glad you're not starting out in the business with all this talent? Something that's so important to my child and important to his life, not just now, to his life. It's given me like much more courage in my life. It's, I'm, not, I'm not scared of too many things now. I think being a part of the school really does help you academically, socially, in all areas of your life. And it's really helped me develop as a person as well with my confidence and obviously uh, ability at singing and dancing and acting. So I set it up with a lot of the contacts that I had and I think the selling point of the school has been the amazing teachers that we've had. They're all Western directors, choreographers, top industry professionals who are top of their game but really want to give something back to the local community and I really feel performing arts is a great way for young people to increase in their confidence, their self-esteem and all of those areas of their lives. I'm a great believer if you want to keep children away from gang crime, knife crime, gun crime, stop concentrating on it, stop keep talking about it, kids are bored of that. They want to learn skills, they want to be able to compete against other people their own age. You, you, you have to put your hands together for Anna because I think this is an amazing thing that she's doing now. Thank you so much for entertaining us. It was absolutely brilliant. And I wish there was something like this when I was around as a kid because I was born in Hackney. <laughs> Um, these children wouldn't have an opportunity to, to follow their dreams and the thing is about it is that it's not just about talent, it's about, it is about discipline and commitment and that you can only get with a good grounding. <laughs> Every day, but when I came onto my beds with hay, oh, the wind and the rain, with toss balls still had drunken heads for the rain, it rained every day. A great while ago, the world began with hay, oh, the wind and the rain, but that's all one. Our prey is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. country friend is this? This is America, lady. What should I do in America? My brother is under the ocean. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, ma'am? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. My poor brother. So perchance may he be. 
True, madam, and to comfort you with chance, assure yourself after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our boat. I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope, both teaching him the practice to a strong mass that lived upon the sea, where like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. No, is thou this country? Aye, madam, well, for I was bred and born not three hours travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as in name. What's the name? Orsino. Orsino? I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late, for but a month ago I went from hence, and then twas fresh the murmur, as you know, what great ones do, the less will prattle of. That he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a man that died some 12 months since, then leaving her, in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for whose dear love they say, she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the word till I have made mine own occasion mellow, what my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. <laughs> There's a fair behavior in thee, ma'am. And though that nature with a beauteous wall doth oft close in pollution, Yet of thee I will believe thou hast a mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character. I pray thee, and I, I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid. For such disguises haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as a a singer to him. Oh, it may be worth thy pain, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may I have? To time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his singer, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see.
If music be the food of love, play on. But give me excess of it. The serpent in the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again? I had a dying fall. Ah, it came over my ear like the sweet sound the breeze upon a bank of violet, stealing and giving order. Enough! No more! It is not so sweet now as it was before. Ah, oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity, receive it as the sea not enters there, of what validity and pits soever, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shape and fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What curio? The heart. <laughs> Why? So I do, the noblest that I have. Oh. When mine eye did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. How, how now? What, what news of her? Oh, please, my lord, I might not be admitted. But from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years heat shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloistress, she will veiled walk, and water want to day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in a sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of such fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affection has, when Leave, uh, leave her heart, brain, this sovereign throne, our own, for feed and feed her sweet perfection with one self king. <sighs> Away before me to sweet bed of flowers. Love thoughts die rich when canopied with powers. Uh, uh, well, the plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. Oh, I'm sure care of an enemy to life. Mm. By my trope, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier or nice. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Well, let her accept before accepted. Mm -hmm. Me, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. So be these boots too. <coughs> All that quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday and of a foolish cab that you bought in one night to woo her. Uh, who, Sir Andrew Agucheek? Aye, he? Aye, he's as tall as man as any is in America. Hmm? Was that to the purpose? I. he has $3,000 a year. <laughs> Yeah, that put a year in all these dollars. He's a very fool and a prodigal. A uh, fine, as you'll say so. He plays um, the vile de Gamboys and speaks uh, three or four languages, uh, word for word, without book, and have all the good gifts of uh, nature. <laughs> we have indeed almost natural. For besides that, he's a fool, he's a great quarreller, and he had but the gift of a coward who lay the gust he had in quarreling. It is thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and some stractors that say so. Uh, who are they? Hmm? Those that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. Oh, with drinking helps to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and drinking and Sonia. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece. <sighs> Sir Toby Belch, how now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew, 
Uh, bless you, fair shrew. And to you too, sir? A uh, cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. Uh, what, sir? My niece is chambermaid. Ah, uh, good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. Uh, my name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. Uh, you mistake, sir. A cost is front her, board her, woo her as sail her. Hmm? By my truth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Uh, fare thee well, gentlemen. Uh, now let it part so, Sir Andrew. Wouldst thou might never show up again? And you part so, mistress, I would I might never show up again. Uh, fair lady, do you, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, so I have not you by the hand. Oh, marry, but you shall have, and there's my hand. Now, sir, thought is free. I pray you, sir, take your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Uh, wherefore, sweetheart, uh, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Uh, why? I think so. I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But but what's what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. <laughs> oh, sir, that lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. No question. And I thought that I'd forswear it. Uh, your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one for none of me, the Duke himself here hard by woos her. Ah, till none of the Duke shall not match below her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear a touch. There's life in it, man! Shall we set about some rebels? Ah, uh, what shall we do else? <laughs> mm. If the Duke continue these favours towards you, Cesario, you are, are like to be much advanced. You have been here yet three days, and already you are no stranger. <laughs> you either fear his humour or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favours? No, <laughs> believe me. Thank you. Oh, here comes the count. Who saw Cesario home? On your attendance, my lord. Here. Uh, stand you a while aloof, Cesario. I've uh, unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, uh, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her door and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and then leave all civil bound rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with, with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my wars. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuns of more grave aspect. <laughs> I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lips is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound and all is semblance of a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right up for this affair. Prosper well in this, 
and thou shalt live as freely as thy Lord to call his fortunes thine. Uh, I'll do my best to woo your lady. Oh, yet a powerful strife, whoever I would. Myself would be his wife. <sighs> Nay, either tell me where thou has been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter by way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colors. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away. Is that not as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. And for turning away, let summer bear it out. You're resolute then? Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your gut is full. <laughs> apt, in good faith, very apt. Well, <laughs> go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of ease flesh as any in Ansonia. <laughs> Peace, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make thy excuse wisely. You were best. Wit, and be thy will, put me into good fooling. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he's no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the tailor mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin, and sin that amends is but patched with virtue. The lady bade take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Ma'am, I bade them take away you. Miss Prison in the highest degree. A good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. <laughs> Can you do it? Dexteriously, good Madonna. Oh, make your proof. Good, my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolia? Doth she not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake her. Infirmity that decays the wise is ever make the better fool. God send you, ma'am, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing of your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn I am no fox, but he would not pass his word for two cents that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolia? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. Why, I saw her put down the other day with an ordinary fool with no more brain than a stone. Look you now, she's out of her guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to her, she is gagged. I protest I take these wise men that crow so at this set kind of fools no better than the fool's zanies. <laughs> you are sick of self-love, Malvolia, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of a free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now, Mercury, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman who much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I don't know, madam. He's a fine young man. 
Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. <sighs> Go you, Malvolia. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One drought above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. <laughs> He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were ill. He takes it on himself to know so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep, but he seems to have foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What's to be said to him, lady? He has forsworn against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. He has been told so. And he says he will stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bridge, but he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why? Of mankind. What manner of man? Oh, very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Oh, not yet old enough for a man nor young enough for a boy. He is very well favoured and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman! <clears throat> yes, madam. My lady. Give me my veil. Oh, yeah. Come. Throw it over my face. <sighs> We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I, I pray you. Tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides being excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Oh, good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? Mm, I can say little more than I've studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance that you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? <laughs> no, my profound heart. Yet by the very fangs of malice, I swear that I'm not, that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you or she, you do usurp yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve, but this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what's important in it, I forgive you the praise. Alas, taking great pains to study. Oh, it is poetical. <laughs> it is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist your sail, sir? He lies your way. No, good swabber. I am to haw here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear.
I bring no over to war, no taxation of homage. I have the olive in my hands. My words are as full of peace as matter. <laughs> Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? <laughs> the rudeness that hath appeared in me, I learned from my entertainment. What I am, what I would. There are secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us this place alone. Hmm. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? <laughs> in Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, the first chapter of his heart. Oh, <laughs> I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Uh, good madam. Let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was at present. It's not well done. <laughs> Excellently done. If God did all. Oh, Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Hmm. Tis beauty truly blend. Whose red and white nature's most sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you would lead those graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried and every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips in different red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You're too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. Oh, my lord and master loves you. Such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the non pareil of beauty. How does he love me? With adoration, with fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension and the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. <laughs> if I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon thy soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contented love and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hallo your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! You should not rest 
within the elements of air and earth. But you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes. Yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare thee well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. <laughs> I'm no feed post, lady. Give your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart of flint that you shall love, and may your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell. Fair cruelty. <laughs> what is your parentage? Oh. Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft. Soft. Unless the master were the man, how now even so quickly may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. Uh, what hope, Malvolia? Madam, at your service. Run after that uh, same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or none. Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold out hopes I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi thee, Mavolia. Madam, I will. <laughs> I do, I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Will you say no longer? Nor will you not that I come with you. By your patience, no, my stars shine darkly over me the malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours therefore i shall crave of you your leave that i may bear my evils alone it were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you let me yet know of whether you are born no sooth sir my determinate voyage is mere extravagancy but i do perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I'm willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Calabria, whom I know you've heard of. He left behind him myself and a daughter, both born in an hour. Now, if the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended, but you, sir, altered that for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Oh, I lost the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me was yet of many accounted beautiful, but thus far will I boldly publish her. She she bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned now, sir, in salt water. Though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir. You're a bad entertainment. 
Oh, good, Antonio. Forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once. In my bosom is full of kindness, and I'm yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more, mine eyes will tell tales of me. I'm bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. Else I will very shortly see thee there. But come with me. I do adore thee so. But danger shall seem sport. And I will go. Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, ma'am. On a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you. You might have spared me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord in a desperate assurance she will none of him. Oh, and one thing more, that you never be so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, it is that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me. Sure, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. Not a mother rings, why he sent her none. I am the man. it be so as it is poor lady she would better love a dream these guys i see thou art a wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much how easy is it for the proper falls in women's waxen hearts to set their forms alas our frailty is the cause not we such as we are made of, such we be. How will this vanish? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time, thou must entangle this, not I. It is too hard enough for me to untie. Uh, approach, Sir Andrew. Oh, not to be a bed after midnight is to be up betimes. And to look ill or sugar, ain't that most? Mm? Nay, my troth, I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. 
a false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Hmm? Does not our life consist of the four elements? Now, faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Oh, then let us therefore eat and drink. Uh, Marion, I say, a oh, stoop of wine. Oh, here comes the fool, if faith. How oh, now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Well, come ask. Now, oh, let's have a catch. Excellent. Now a song. Come on, there's two bits for you. Let's have a catch. Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song. A love song. I, I, I care not for good life. Mm. Do, 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 oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, saying here your true love's coming, that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lovers meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Excellent, good faith. Good, good. What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth brings present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Then come and kiss me, sweet and twenty. Use the stuff will not endure. A mellifluous voice as I am true man. Oh, a contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious if faith. Yeah, but Shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we do that? <laughs> Most certain. Let our catch be thou knave. Uh, begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. Oh, I'll never begin if I hold my peace. Oh, good be faith. Come begin. <clears throat> hold, hold, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, oh, my knave. Knave, 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 knave. Hold thy peace, knave. Knave, 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 Lady had not called her stewardess Melvolia and bid her turn you out of doors. Never trust me. Three merry men be we, and of her blood. Hilly valley, lady. Bestrew me the sheiks and admirable fooling. Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed, and so do I, too. That he does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. Ah, oh, the 12th day of December, my true love gave to me. Oh, the 12th day of love My masters, are you mad, or what are you? Have you no wit of manners, nor honesty? Do you gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an alehouse? Of my lady's house, did you squeak out your coziest catches? Had you no respect for places, person, or time in you? We did keep time, ma'am, in our catches. <laughs> Snack up. <laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. Mm. My lady bade me tell you that while she harbours you as a kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself from your misdemeanors, 
you are welcome at this house. If not, and it would please you to take your leave of her, she is willing to bid you farewell. <gasps> farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. <laughs> Toby! His eyes to show, his ears are almost done. <laughs> is it even so? <laughs> But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 no. You dare not. Out of tune, ma'am. You lie. Art thou any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Ha! Ah, go, ma'am, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favour at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. You'll hear of it. By this hand, <laughs> oh, go shake your ears. <laughs> For as good a deed as to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him the field, and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, old chap. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to her by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the camp was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Madame Malvolia, leave me alone with her. If I do not gull her into a nay word and make her a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us. Possess us. Tell us something of her. <laughs> Marry, sir. But sometimes she's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat her like a dog. What? For being a Puritan? Oh, the devil a Puritan she is, or anything constant, but a time pleaser, an affection ass that can state without book and utters it with great swings. Thus persuaded of herself, so crammed she thinks with excellences, that it is her grounds of faith that all that look on her love her. And it is on that device and her will my revenge find notable cause to work. What will thou do? I will drop in her way some obscure epistles of love, wherein the shape of her leg, the manner of her gait, the expression of her eye, forehead, and complexion, she will find herself most feelingly fascinated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, you can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I <laughs> smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> she shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with her. <laughs> and my purpose is indeed a horse of that colour. And your horse now would make her an ass. <laughs> As I doubt not. <laughs> Sport boy, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with her. For this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. <laughs> Good night. Before me, she's a good woman. She's a beagle, true bred, and one that adores me. I was adored once, too. Mm. <laughs> Give me some music! I now, got good morrow, friends. I got and now, says I... I got my but that piece of song, that, that old and antique song we had last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much. More than light airs and recollected terms of those things. Give the pace at times. Come, but one verse. He is not here, said King Jolon. And who was it? Yesterday, yesterday, my lady. A fool that the Lady Olivia's father took much to like. 
Seek him out and play the tune the while. Thou shalt love, and the sweet pangs of it remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are. Unstayed and skittish in all motions as a save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? Very nice. The speaker love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it love. Had it not, boy? <laughs> A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Uh, of your complexion. <laughs> she is not worthy, then. What is your faith? About your ears, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So she wears to him, so she sways level in her husband's heart. <laughs> oh boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancy are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and warm than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself. All thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower, being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas, that they are so. To die, even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, uh, come. Uh, the song we had last night, mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. The, the spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the, and the free maids that weave the thread with bone do used to chant it. It is silly suit and dull is with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Oh, I breathe, really sing. Come, come away, death, and in sad Cyprus let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath, I am slain by a fair cruel maid. My shroud of white circle with you. Oh, prepare it, my part of death. No one so true did not share it, not a flower. Not a flower sweet on my black coffin. Let there be strewn. Not a friend, not a friend greet on my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand sighs to save. Lay me aware, sad true lover, never find my bones to weep there. That's for thy pain. No pain, sir. Truly, I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. 
Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy gods protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is very opal. Let Farewell. all the rest give place. Uh, once again, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love more noble than the word prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The path that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I owed as giddily as fortune. But is that miracle and queen of gem that nature pranks her in attracts my soul? Ah, oh, my if she cannot love you, sir. Well, I cannot be so answered. But you must. Say there's some lady, as perhaps the Rees have for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's side can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart is so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. No motions of the liver, but the palate who suffer surfeit, cloyment and revolt. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear to me and then I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What does I know? Too well. What love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, Feed on her damask cheek, she pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy she sat, like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love, indeed? We, men, may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But uh, died thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters in my father's house. And all the brothers too. <laughs> yet, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Uh, Aye, 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 aye that, that's, that's the theme, to, to her in haste. Uh, gi give her this jewel. Say, my love can give no place. Bite no delay. Come thy way, Signor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. <laughs> Wouldst thou not be glad to have the rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? <laughs> I would exult, man. You know she brought me out of favour with my lady about a bear baiting here. Uh, to anger her, we'll have the bear again, and we will fool her black and blue. Shall we not, <laughs> Sir Andrew? Um, we do not, it is pity of our lives. Ah, here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Get your three into a box tree, for Malvolia is coming down the walk. She's yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to her own shadow this half hour. 
observer for the love of mockery, but I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of her. Close in the name of jesting. Lie down there. This but fortune. All is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me. And I have heard her come thus near that, should she fancy, it would be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me in a more exalted respect than any other people that follow her. What should I think on it? Oh, here's an overweening rogue. Well, peace. Contemplation makes a haughty peacock of her. How she jets under her advanced plumes. Light my so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Countess Malvolia. Pistol her, pistol her. Peace, peace. There is an example for it. The Lady of the Strachy married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fie on him, Jezebel. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a slingshot to hit her in the eye. Calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Peace! And then to have the humour of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they do theirs, to ask for my kinsman Toby. Bolts and shackles! Oh, peace, peace, peace. Now, now. Seven of my people, with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while. Perchance wind up my watch, or play with my... Oh, God. Some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this harlot live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I, I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take your blow on the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! Hey, patience. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time on a foolish drone. Well, that's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew to I, for many do call me fool. No. Oh. What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the chin. Oh, peace. And the spirit of humour is intimate reading aloud to him. By my life. Tis my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, her T's, and thus makes she her great P's. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her uh, C's, her U's, and her T's, why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. Or by Olive, wax. Soft and the impressure Lucrece with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? This Windsor. <laughs> Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows? I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Christian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. 
Nay, but first, let me see, let me see. Did she poison as she dressed her? <laughs> I might may command where I adore. Why? She may command me. I serve her. She's my lady. <laughs> Why, this is evident. The end. What, what should this alphabetical position portend? I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. M O A I. M. 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 Malvo. M. Why? That begins my name. Did not I say she would work it out? M. But then there is no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does, and then I comes behind. And yet every one of these letters are in my name. Oh, soft. He follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. <clears throat> in my stars, I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. The opposite of the kinsman, surly with servants, put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross-gartered. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. The fellow of servants are not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee. But fortunate, unhappy. Daylight and champion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud, I will baffle Sir Toby, I will wash off gross acquaintance. I do not fool myself now to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this, <laughs> that my lady loves me. Oh, I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings and cross guarded. <laughs> Jove and my stars be praised. Oh, here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose, but know who I am. If thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything thou wilt have me. Will not give my part in this sport for a pension of thousands. I could marry this wench for this device. Oh, so could I. And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. <laughs> Nor I either. Oh, oh, here comes my noble fool catcher. <laughs> <laughs> Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Or on mine either. Why, thou hast put her in such a dream. But when the image of it leaves her, she must run mad. <laughs> Me, but say true, does it work upon her? Uh, like aqua vitae, uh, with a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will then see the fruits of the sport. Mark her first approach before my lady. She'll come to her in yellow stockings. Tis a colour she abhors. cross garters, A fashion she detests. She will smile upon her, which is now so unsuitable to her disposition, being so addicted to a melancholy that she is, that it cannot but turn her into a notable contempt. If you will see it, 
Follow me. <laughs> I saw the late at the counter Sinos. Foolery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. <laughs> that fellow is wise enough to play the fool. And to do it well craves a kind of wit. She must observe their moods on whom she jests, the quality of person and the time, and uh, as if hawkish. <laughs> Check out every feather that comes before her eye. It is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's heart. For folly that she wisely shows is fit. <laughs> but wise men, folly full and quite tame their wit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> God uh, save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Do you fool God, uh, Monsieur? Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. Uh, I hope so you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she's the least of my voyage. Mm, taste your legs, sir. My legs do better understand me, sir. Then I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will prove you with gate and entrance. But we are prevented. Most excellent accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on <laughs> That's a rare courtier. Brain odors, well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your most pregnant and uh, vouchsafed ear. Odors, pregnant and vouchsafed. I'll get them all three already. <clears throat> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Mm. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. Twas never merry world since lowly feigning was called compliment. You are servant to the Count Orsino, youth. And he is yours? And so his needs must be yours. The servant of your servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. <sighs> madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you under to... Take another suit. I would rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady. Oh, I beseech you. Give me leave. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in search of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tear in his heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. A cypress. Not a bosom hideth my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a grief. 
for it is vulgar proof that often we pity enemies. Why then, methinks it is time to smile again. Oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. But if one should fall prey, how much the better to fall before a lion than the wolf. <sighs> the clock abrades me with the waste of time. Fear not, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth have come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way. Do rest. Then rest for home. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Oh, stay. I prithee. Tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. And think you're right. I am not what I am. I would you were what I would have you be. <laughs> would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks Beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows itself not more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of spring, by maidenhead, truth, honor, and everything, I love thee so that Mogger all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has nor never known, mistress shall be of it, save I, alone. And so, adieu, good madam. Nevermore I will my master's tears to you deplore. Oh, yet come again. Thou may, perhaps, mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. No, Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Marry, I saw your niece do more favours to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it here. Uh, did she see you the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her towards you. Slack, will you make an ass of me? She did show favour to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. <laughs> you should then have accosted her, and with some excellent jests, mm. you should have banged the youth into dumbness. <laughs> this was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. Double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off. Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valour or policy. And be any way, it must be with valour, for policy I hate. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valour. <clears throat> Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him and assure thyself. There is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, uh, uh, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. Be eloquent and full of 
um, invention. <clears throat> Taunt him with the license of ink. Go about it. <laughs> Where shall I find you? Where we'll call thee in the earth, Sonia. Go, go, go. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. <laughs> I have been dear to him, lassie. Some 2,000 strong or so. <laughs> we shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me, then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. <whistles> Look where the youngest wren of mine comes. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you desire the spleen and will love yourself into stitches, follow me. She's in yellow stockings. <laughs> and cross guarded <laughs> most villainously I've dogged I've dogged her like a murderer you've not seen such a thing as this I know my lady will strike her and if she do she'll smile and take it for a great favour oh, come bring us bring us where she is <laughs> <laughs> I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I did not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel did, spur me forth. And not all love to see you. There's so much as might have drawn one through a longer voyage. But jealousy, what might befall your travel? Being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, did spur me forth. My, my kind Antonio, I can, I can no other answer make, but thanks. And, and thanks, and ever oft good turns are, are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. Uh, but when my worth is, is my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. <laughs> What's the do? Shall we uh, go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. First, first, go see to your lodging. I'm not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes on the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. Would you pardon me, sir? I do not without danger walk these streets. Were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Belike he slew great number of his people. Ah, oh, the offence is not of such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of the time and quarrel. Might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them. As most of our city did for traffic's sake, only myself stood out. For which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs, at the elephant is best of all. I will bespeak our diet. While you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of this time, there you shall have me. Why are your purse? Happily, your eye shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store, sir, is not for idle markets, I think. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elf. I do remember. I have sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is begged more often than borrowed. Oh, I speak too loud. Where's Malvolia? She is sad and civil and suits well for a servant of my fortunes. Where is Malvolia? Oh, uh, she's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. She is sure possessed, madam. Why, what's the matter? Does she rave? No, madam. She does nothing but smile. 
your ladyship were best to have some guard about you. If she come, for sure the woman is tainted in her wits. Well, go call her hither. I am as mad as she, if sad and merry madness equal be. What ho, Malvolia? Sweet lady, ho, ho. <laughs> Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad? I could be sad, but what of it? This does cause some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering, but... <laughs> But if it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one, and please all. Why, how dost thou, woman? What is the matter with thee? Not dark in my soul as yellow in my legs. It did come into her hand, and commands shall be executed. I think we know the sweet hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolia? <clears throat> to bed? My sweetheart, I'll come to thee. God, comfort thee. Why appear with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, t'was well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolia? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> Heavens restore thee. Remember thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings. And I wish to see thee cross-gartered. Cross-gartered. Go to thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Oh, why, this is very midsummer madness. Good Maria, let this fellow be looked to. Where is my cousin Toby? Let some of my people take special care of her. I would not have her miscarry for half my dowry. Oh, ho. No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose so I may appear stubborn to him, or she incites me to that in the letter. The opposite with the kinsman, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself in the trick of singularity. I have limed her. This is Jove's doing, but Jove make me thankful. Oh, and when she went away just now, let that fellow be looked to. Not Valvolia, nor off of my degree, but fellow. Oh, everything adheres together, but no dram of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the, the full prospect of my hopes. Uh, which way is she? In the name of sanctity. Ah, here she is. Here she is. How is it with you, ma'am? Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off. Oh, how hollow the feet speaks within her. Did not I tell you? Sir Toby, my lady, prays you take a care of her. Ah, uh -huh. does she so? Peace, peace. We must deal gently with her. Let me alone. <clears throat> How do you, Malvolia? How is't with you? What? What woman? Defy the devil! Consider he's an enemy to mankind! You know what you say. Now you and you speak ill of the devil. How she takes it to heart. Oh, pray God she be not bewitched! You need carry her water to the witch doctor. Oh, well, my lady would not lose her for more than her say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Prithee, hold thy peace. Do you not see you move her? Let me alone with her. No way but gentleness. Gently. Gently. Why, how now, my boar cock? How dost thou chuck? Sir? Aye, biddy. 
Come with me, Satan. Get her to say her prayers. Good Sir Toby, get her to pray. My prayers, Minx? Oh, no, I warrant you, she will not hear of godliness. Oh, go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> as an improbable <laughs> fiction. Her very genius have taken the infection of the device, man. <laughs> we must do her now, lest the device take air and take. Why, we shall make her mad indeed. <laughs> the house will be the quieter. Uh, come, we'll, we'll have her in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that she's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and her penance, till our very pastime, tired, out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on her. But see, but see. <laughs> ah, more matter for a May morning? Oh, here's the challenge. Read it. Warrant, there's vinegar and pepper in it. Oh, it's so saucy. <laughs> Give me. Aye, it is. I do but read. Give me. <clears throat> News. Whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. Ah, a good note. Hmm. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief. I will lay thee going home. I will lay thee. Go I will waylay thee going home. Uh, <clears throat> where it will, if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Fare thee well. And God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine. But my hope is better, and so look to thyself, thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguecheek. Mm. <laughs> if this letter move him not, his legs cannot. <laughs> I'll give it to him. You may have very fit occasion for it, for he is now in some commerce with my lady, and will by and by depart. Uh, go, Sir Andrew, scout me for him at the corner of the roof top, bloody as the hunter. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. For it comes to pass that a terrible oath oft gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! Hey, let me alone for swearing. Mm -hmm. Now will not I deliver this letter for being so excellently ignorant. It will breed no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clod pole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. <laughs> Set upon Aguecheek a notable report of valor and drive the gentleman into the most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. Mm. Here he comes with your niece. Oh, give them way. I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honour to uncarry on it. There is something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same haviour that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here. Wear this jewel for me, tis my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. 
And I beseech you come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That the honor saved may upon asking give? Nothing but this. Your true love for my master. How with mine honor can I give him that which I have given you? I will have you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fairly well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That offence thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the rooftop end. <laughs> you mistake, sir, I'm sure. No man hath any quarrel to me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your guard. For your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is dubbed with an unratched, unhatched rapier, and he's the devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three. Hmm. And his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Ah, Hobnob, it's his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. Back you shall not to the house. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the man what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabian, mm -hmm. stay you by this gentleman till my return. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the man is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but uh, hmm, nothing of the circumstance more. I do not know what manner of man is he? He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of America. <laughs> Will you walk towards him? <clears throat> Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a fighter. I had a pass with him, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that uh, it's inevitable. Come, son, I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Mm. Plague on it. And I thought he'd been valiant and so cunning. I'd have seen him damned there. I'd have challenged him. I'll make the motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. And this shall end without the perdition of souls. I've persuaded the youth he's a devil. <laughs> he pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heels. <laughs> mm, there's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake. Therefore, draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests. He will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. What little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man? And give ground if you see him furious. Mm. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. This gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman, uh, he will not hurt you. Come on, toot. Pray God, you keep his oath. I do assure you, it is against my will. Put down your hands. If the young gentleman have done offence, I take the fault on me. 
You, sir? If the offender, my foreign to fight. Huh. Why, what are you? One, sir. The four is not theirs yet do more. And you heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Ooh. Oh, good, Sir Toby. <laughs> Hold. Here comes the officer. Ah, I'll be with you anon. Antonio, I rest thee at the suit of Count Alcino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir. No jot. I know your favour well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes seeking it, but there is no room. I will answer. What will you do now? My necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. You stand the means, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness that you've showed me here, out of my lean and low ability, I will lend you something. <sighs> my having is not much. Hold, there is half of my money. Will you, de will you deny me not? Is it possible my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery. As to make me so unsound a man, as to upbraid you for those kindnesses I've done for you. I know none, nor I know you by voice or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in a man than any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you, go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half on the jaws of death, relieved them with such sanctity of love unto his image, which me thought did promise most venerable work, that I devotion. What's that to us? The oh. time goes by. Away. <laughs> A vile and idle proves this god. Thy hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame. In nature, there's no, there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called the form but the unkind. Time grows mad. Away with him. Come, come, sir. Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly. He believes himself, so do not I. Prove true imagination, oh, prove true, that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. He, he names Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such, and so in favor was my brother, for he went still in this fashion color or in a man for him I imitate. Oh, if it prove tempest arcane and salt waves fresh to move. A very dishonest paltry boy. Mm -hmm. and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. I'll after him and beat him. Do cuff him soundly. Can I do not? Oh, come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money, it will be nothing yet. Will you make me believe I am not sent for you? Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow, let me be clear of thee. 
Well held out in faith. No, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? He hath heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I prithee now tell me, what shall I vent to my lady? Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish geek, thou knowest not me. Depart from me. Ah, now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. <coughs> Why, there's for thee. And that, and that. Are all the people mad? <coughs> Hold, sir, or I'll throw you over the house. <coughs> this will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two bits. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in America. Though I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your fist. You are well fleshed. Come on. Oh, I will be free from thee. <sighs> what wouldst thou now? What? What? Nay, then, I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. Hold, Toby. On thy life I charge thee, hold. Uh, madam! Will it be ever thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and barbarous caves where manners now were preached. Not offended, dear Cesario. Roosby, be gone. I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me into my house. And hear thou there how this virtuous prank, this ruffian, hath botched up, that thou thereby mayst smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny. Beshrew his shoulder for me. I, he started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is this? How runs the stream? Or I am mad. Or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense in stream deep, if it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. Nay, I prithee, put on this gown. Make her believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the worst. Well, I will put it on and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would I were the first to ever dissemble in such a gown. <laughs> Joe, bless thee, Master Parson. <laughs> Buenos dias, Sir Toby. That that <laughs> is, is. So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. Uh, to her, Sir Topas. To what ho, I say, peace in this prison. <laughs> the fool counterfeits well, a good fool. <laughs> Who calls that? Sir Topas, the curate, that comes to speak with Malvolia, the lunatic? Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz, go to my lady. 
Out, hyperbolical fiend! Talkest thou nothing but of ladies! Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topaz, never was woman thus wronged. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most mildest of terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that would use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why, it hath bay windows, transparent as ebony, and yet complainest thou still of darkness? I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark. Mad woman, thou heiress. I say there is no darkness but ignorance. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say there was never woman thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What? Is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wild fowl? That the soul of our granddam might haply inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul and no way approve his opinion. Fare thee well, remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold to the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou dispossesses the soul of thy grand dam. Fare thee well. Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! My most exquisite Sir Topaz! Nay, I am for all waters. Uh, to her in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou findest her. I would we were well rid of this trickery. If she may be conveniently delivered, I would she were, for I am now so far in offence with my niece, <clears throat> Maria. <clears throat> Come by and by to my chamber. Mm, so mm. Ooh. <laughs> hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool! My lady is unkind, purdy. Fool! Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves another. Who calls there, huh? Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle, and pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentlewoman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Mistress Malvolia! I good fool. Alas, ma'am, how fell you beside your five wits? Fool, there was never woman so notoriously abused. I'm as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well. Then you're mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have here propertied me. Keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise what you say. The minister is here. Malvolia, Malvolia, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble babble. Sir Topaz! Maintain no words with her. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God buy you good, Sir Topaz. Marry a man. I will, sir, I will. Fool, 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 I say. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I'm as well in my wits as any woman in America. By this hand I am. Good fool, some ink, paper and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it, but tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. 
I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. I prithee be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir. I'll be with you again in a trice, like to the old vice. Your need to sustain, who with dagger and laugh, in his rage and his wrath, cries, aha, to the devil, like a mad lad, pare thy nails, dad. Adieu, good man, devil. This is the air that is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was. And there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service, for though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error for no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad, or else the lady's mad, yet it was so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch in such a smooth, discreet and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. Blame, blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by and there before him and under that consecrated roof, plight to me the full assurance of thy faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it whilst you are willing and it shall come to note what time we are celebration keep according to my birth. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. <laughs> then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see this letter. <laughs> Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. <laughs> Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? I, sir, were some of her trappings. I know thee well. Uh, how dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. <laughs> how can that be? Mary, sir, friends praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass. So by my foes, I profit in the knowledge of myself. And by my friends, I'm abused. So if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no. Though it please you to be one of my friends, you shall not be the worse for me. There's gold. Uh, but that it would be double dealing, sir. I would you could another. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Lullaby to your bounty, sir, till I come again. I will awake it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember, boy. Here in these streets, desperate of shame and state, in private grabble did we apprehend him. 
What foolish boldness bring thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hath made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, a witchcrafter in me, that most ingrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas enraged and foamy might that I redeem. His life I gave him and did thereto add my love. Without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this adverse time. Drew to defend them when he was beset, where being apprehended, his false coming, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wake. Denied me mine own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. <laughs> How can this be? <clears throat> when came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before. No one through, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me. But more of this anon, take him aside. What would my lord but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Gracious Cesario. Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Madam. Good my lord. Uh, my lord would speak. My duty hashes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ears as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. To, to, what? To perverseness. You, uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altar my soul, the faithfulest offering, hath breathed out the air devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even would it please my lord that may become him. Why? Should I not, and hide the heart to do it, kill what I love? But hear me this. Since you to non regardance cast my fate, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, leave you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom, by heaven, I swear I tend dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I will sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I must jock on act and willingly to do your rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? For he my love, more than I love these eyes, more than my life, and more by all more than ever I shall love wife. Oh, if I do feign you, witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. <laughs> I me detested. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Huh? Who does you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? I, husband, can he that deny? Her husband, Sira? No, my lord, not I. Oh, alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. 
<sighs> Welcome, father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what lately we had intended to keep in darkness, what occasion now reveals before tis ripe. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested to by holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your ring, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony, since when my watch hath told me toward my grave I have travelled but two hours. O oh, thou dissembling cup! What wilt thou be when time has saw the grizzle on thy case? Or will not someone else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thy overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I and spouse may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, mm. do not swear. Hold little faith, for thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon, and send one presently to Sir Toby. Why? What's the matter? He's broke my head across, and has given Sir Toby a bloody head, too. For the love of God, your help, I'd rather than forty pound, I'm read home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? Here he is. You, you broke my head for nothing. Why do you speak to me? You drew your fist first upon me, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody head be a hurt, you have hurt me. Here comes Sir Toby, haughty. You shall hear more. How now, gentlemen? How is it with you? Uh, there's all one. Uh, he has hurt me. Uh, there's an end on it, suck. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour agone. His eyes <sighs> were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue. Uh, I hate a drunken rogue. Uh, Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with him? <sighs> I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help an asshead and a clodpole and a thin-faced fool? Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I'm sorry, madam. I've hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one, one habit in two persons. A, a natural perspective that is and is it not. Oh, Antonio! Oh, oh, my dear Antonio! How have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearst thou that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? <laughs> Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Calabria. Sebastian was my father. 
Let's say Sebastian was my brother too. And so he went suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume but form and suit, you come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, thrice welcome, drowned Viola. <laughs> my father had them all upon his brow. And so had mine. <laughs> Nothing left to make us happy both, but these, my masculine usurped attire. Do not embrace me, till each circumstance of place, time, fortune to cohere and jump that. I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a woman in this town where lie my maiden Swedes by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All of the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook, but nature to her bias drew in that. You could have been contracted to a maid, nor are you therein, by my life, deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be true, as yet the glasses seem so, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times that thou never shouldest love woman like to me. And all the sayings I will ever swear. And all those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's wheat. The woman that did bring me first on shore had my maid's garments. Fetch Malvolia hither. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor woman, she's much distract. <sighs> A most extracting frenzy of mine own from my remembrance clearly banished hers. How does she, lady? Has here writ a letter to you. I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madwoman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when delivered. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the mad woman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam! How now? Art thou mad? Uh, no, madam, I do but read madness, and as your ladyship would have it as it ought to be, you must allow Vox. <laughs> read it you, Sarah. <laughs> By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolia. Did she write this? Aye, madam. This savors not much of distraction. See her delivered, Fabian. Bring her hither. Mm -hmm. My lord, so please you to think on me as well a sister as a wife. One day to, to crown the alliance on it. So please you hear 
at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace thy offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex and so far beneath your soft and tender breathing. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this moment be your master mistress. <laughs> Sister, you are she. Is this the mad woman? I, my lord, the same. How now? Malvolia? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolia? No. Here do you have. Pray you, peruse this letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. You'll say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of that. Well, grant it then. And tell me in the modesty of honor why you have given me such clear lights of favor, bade me come smiling and cross guarded to you, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. And acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by a priest, and made the most notorious geck and gull that air invention ever played on? Tell me why. Alas, Malvolia, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but out of question, this is Maria's hand. And now I do bethink me, t'was she first told me thou wast mad. Prithee, be content, this practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and the authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Uh, good madam, uh, hear me speak. Most freely I confess myself and Toby set this device against Malvolia here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against her. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance in recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sportful malice it was followed may rather pluck on laughter than revenge if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. <laughs> Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled thee. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one ma'am in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you laugh not? Look, he's gagged. And thus the whirly gig of time brings his revenges. I shall be revenged on the whole pack of you. She hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue her and entreat her to a peace. When that is done and golden time convents, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. <laughs> Meantime, dear sister, we shall not move from hence. Come, Cesario, for so you shall be till you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, for Sino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When then I was a little tiny girl with hey, hey oh, oh, the wind in the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy for the rain, it raineth every day. 
But when I came to this estate with hay, oh, the wind and the rain, against knaves and thieves, men shut their gates, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came, alas, as wife, with hey ho, the wind in the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came unto my bed with hey ho, the wind in the rain, with tossed but still had drunken heads, for the rain it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey ho. The wind and the rain, but that's all one. Our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half past eight. Now, dearie, don't be late. I want to be there when the band starts playing. Remember, when we get there, honey, the two steps, I'm going to have them all going to dance off both of my shoes when they play the Jelly Roll Blues tomorrow night at the Downtown Shutters Ball. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. You better be ready about half past eight. Now, dearie, don't be late. I want to be there when the band starts playing. Remember, when we get there, honey, the two steps, I'm going to have them all going to dance on both of my shoes when they play the Jelly Roll Blues tomorrow night at the Downtown Strutters Ball. Five, six, seven, eight. All are going to dance off both my shoes when the play the jelly roll blues. Tomorrow night at the dark dance, brother, ball, 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 ball. Going to dance off both my shoes when the play the jelly roll blues. Tomorrow night at the dark dance, brother, the dark dance, brother, ball. 